This is Long Shots, VEASAN's premier golf betting podcast. Here's Matt Brown, Wes Reynolds, and Kelly Bidlin. Hey, it's a very special edition of Long Shots. We're going to talk about the U.S. Open Pinehurst number two over there in North Carolina. Looking like we're going to get a dry major for a change. Looking forward to not having to go, if it rains or if it doesn't rain or how hard it rains or the wind blowing and stuff like that. It looks like we're actually going to get just a true test of who is the best golfer in the world. Matt Brown, Kelly Bidlin, Wes Reynolds here. And uh, guys, unfortunately, we already know the answer to that question. And uh, the answer to that question is Scotty Scheffler. (laughs) And it's Scotty Scheffler by a very, very long shot. Goes out, wins again this past week at the Memorial with his, what would we call it, B-plus game, B-ish game, and still able to beat everybody and was not able to get tracked down. I mean, what do we do with a guy, that Wes, that can, he can play his B-plus game, his well, B game, and still win? His approach game was A-plus, plus, plus, yeah. plus, uh, <laughs> gaining 13.2 <laughs> shots on approach. That was almost, I think, like six, it was almost six and a half strokes more than the second place guy on approach had win, of course. I uh, Another runner-up for me this season with Colin Morikawa, yeah. who uh, had his chance to uh, get, get uh, the door was left open, had his chance, but just never could take advantage on the back. Yeah, I don't know about you, Wes, but I've said, uh, Ben Wilson, let me know when uh, Colin Morikawa is lifting that trophy, and then I'll get excited about his chances uh, uh, that in that tournament. Once he hit that poor chip on 16, it was pretty much yeah. DOA for his chances. Yeah, it is. It is. It's just, I'm going to say it's, it's still fun for the sport for us. I mean, we have a guy doing Tiger-esque things. Don't hate tweet me. Yes, he's doing (laughs) Tiger-esque things right now out there against the deepest field that we've ever seen in golf. And we head into the U.S. Open at Pinehurst number two. As Scotty Scheffler, a plus 280 number next to his name to win. No, that is not a top five. That is not a top ten. To win plus 280 on Scotty Scheffler, it is minus 140 on the top five, minus 275 on the top 10. Xander Schauffele goes all the way to 10 to 1 over at DraftKings. Roy McElroy, 11. Morikawa, 14. Victor Hovland, 18. We've got a few at 20 at Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka. Ludwig Oberg is sitting there at 22. Rom at 25, and everybody else is 35 to 1 or longer. We'll talk about some of these as we go along the way. But, Kelly, we start with Scotty Scheffler and – I'm my advice to people this week. I've gotten texts from friends. I've gotten people tweet at me and they're like, well, you know, what do you do with Scotty? What do you do with this number? What's going on? I think my, my answer has been so far is figure out a way to get some sort of exposure to Mm -hmm. him. If you live in a state where there's DFS, maybe you just go all in on Scotty Scheffler on every team that you make. If you live in a, if you, if you don't want to, get the 280 number, go in and figure out something you really love in one of these exotic markets or whatever it is. But I would not be naked to Scotty Scheffler in this tournament. Yeah, me either. This is, uh, I, I, I'm interested. I can't wait to get to to the, your bets later and mm. the interesting approach you took on it because I think it is one uh, worth talking about. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, it, it is a bet for me this week. Uh, I, I bet a top five on him this week. Mm. And I, I mean, the other way, I think the way we often talk about it, Matt, is okay, if you're looking for outright bets, maybe look the outright market without Scotty Scheffler I think that's also fair to still say but though your wording I, I'm, I'm gonna go back to because I feel like this is a week I need to have some mm-hmm. of him not just you know not just excluding him from markets but I want to be in on Scheffler bets. Wes we look at Scheffler and this is the shortest favorite we've had since 2005 at a U.S. Open I can't poke holes in the number attached to his name if you look as you mentioned not only you just look at his numbers from last week but Honestly, this run that he's on right now, and then this course and this course fit, everything is coming up, Scotty. Yeah, and shortest favorite, by the way, since 09 in a major. Mm. Uh, that was uh, Tiger Woods at Hazeltine at the 09 PGA Championship. Why Yang ended up knocking him off. Tiger finished second, as in a side note. But, yeah, I'm, same thing as Kelly here. I do have a, a top five on mm. Scotty Scheffler. Uh, not an outright spoiler alert. Uh, Going to be a glutton for punishment again, and uh, and uh, go ahead and bet the uh, under 3-1 to one, uh, favorite here. But, yeah, you got to have something with it. Uh, now, in terms of the matchups, too, if you want to use matchups, now you got to lay big mm. prices on on all these matchups. And and he's matched up against the elite. Look, he's minus 190 against the right. PGA champion, for God's sake. Mm-hmm. Xander Schauffele, he's uh, 240 against Colin Morikawa. He's uh, 220, 225 against Rory McIlroy. So I, I did, did. I was wondering about that. I made my top five bet yesterday, and I bet it at like minus 137. Mm. 
I found a 180 on Xander. I like Xander this week. All I'm saying is I think that's probably even a more intelligent bet. If for some reason you don't like Xander as much this week, you're only going up against one guy as compared mm-hmm. to the rest of the field trying to crack top five. Yeah, it is. it really is. You look at this, you lay this course plays out, and, and Wes will we'll talk to you here about how it is. But, I mean, it's a... It is a long course. It's a par 70, so fewer scoring opportunities out there. And that just also favors a guy who is the best in the world at par fours and the guy who is hitting fairways left and right, who is the best approach player we've seen in quite a long time. And so you start to put everything together, and and I'm – I'm ta- I was trying to talk myself into some of these other dudes. And look, I do have some other outright plays. I'm not going to say you should not be listening for, for further in this in this show. We definitely have some other outright plays, but there are they're going to have to be guys that play a plus that like you said a plus plus pluses and have to have Scotty play B in order for them to, to win the way that he's going right now. Yeah, a- exactly. Look, and maybe the course is going to be the great equalizer mm-hmm. here because uh, the course is always the big story in any USGA event and how it's set up and with the greens being changed, and we'll get in that momentarily mm-hmm. with uh, you know the speed of the greens, the fact that you don't really have thick rough here, mm-hmm. you have sandy expanses and waste areas. So this is a different type of U.S. Open. Now, I think it's going to play a little bit more traditional, not but just without the rough. It's yeah. not the you know five inch thick rough, but we've seen a couple non traditional U.S. Opens at different venues over the years. I think we're getting kind of back to what we normally think of a U.S. Open this week. Kelly, I know you you like to play weatherman whenever we do our podcast. You like to come in, but I can tell you this. You don't have anything to talk about, but No weatherman Kelly this week. You don't have anything no to talk about. Kelly. It did rain Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of last week over there, but it is going to be eight straight days of 85 plus, if not getting into the 90 territory. This course is going to be dried out. It's going to be fast. It's going to be firm. It's going to be exactly as they wanted it to be as we head into play. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, man, the greens, and we always talk about the green complexes and what these look like here, but you're already getting those crown greens where everything is going to naturally run off anyways and but if they're firm and fast like we know they're going to be it makes it even more likely it's going to be tougher to stick these approach shots and not let them uh, roll off the green and uh, around the green is going to be extremely important this week for uh, uh, for the guys out there I mean sand safe scrambling your basic around the green stuff all going to be su- stuff you got to factor in heavily yeah Wes as I mentioned it's 7,500 plus yards here if you and I wouldn't play it it'd be a 72 they have a they reg- they're going to play it at a par 70 this week but let's talk a little bit about Pinehurst number two for people that aren't familiar with the course and again like i said if you wanted to it's gonna you know it's gonna cost you and you're gonna have to like make some plans but yeah you can go play it if you want to yeah donald mm-hmm. ross design originally in the early 1900s uh most recent renovation bill coor and ben crenshaw did the renovations uh uh before the 2014 uh, u.s open and uh you know basically took out all the rough and wanted to get it more like the donald ross course originally was which is a lot of sandy waste areas uh uh course at 75 43 may pay, play a a little bit shorter in the yardage because the fairways are actually pretty darn generous uh, for a U.S. Open. You know, 40 yards on average in terms of the landing areas with the width. Uh, but, you know, you've got some really weird stuff here. You can get some really tricky lies if you don't hit these fairways because most of the fairways, by the way, they pinch in at about like 300 plus yards. Uh, so you can rip it a little bit off the tee, but you got to be more positional. I think necessarily than either long nor accurate. Uh, you have these wire grass plantings, uh, like I talk about. Uh, a lot of bunkers on this course too. Besides the sandy waste areas, uh, 117 true sand bunkers and all. And it's going to play quick, firm, and fast. Uh, uh, the big difference, though, of course, the greens, which average about 6,500 square feet. They go from bent grass to Bermuda grass this time around. Speed's going to be just the same, going to be between 13 and 14 on the stimp. It's ultra dwarf Bermuda, which they feel like they could keep better maintenance in the summer. And that's why Pinehurst number two went ahead and made the change because of the heat and the humidity down there. So, so you're right. Par 70, just the two par fives. Uh, about a 590 on the front nine. And then number 10, where you start the back nine, a little over 600 yards. So... You can drive it off the tee. Like the the fairways aren't all that intimidating, but you got to position it because these greens, they have roll offs everywhere. You know, they're kind of like called turtleback greens, where if you're in a certain spot, they're going to roll off the green. And you might have seen the video clip just a couple minutes ago as they were showing a little bit of the flyover. These things are rolling. 
And these things will roll off the green if you don't hit it right. So you got to play, you know, I think Victor Hovland talked about it at the press conference uh, earlier today where he said, aggressive off the tee and conservative into the greens. So these guys are going to try to make middle of the greens, uh, you know, most times. And pars are going to be very good scores here. As you can see right here, if you do have a VEASAN Pro subscription, you're watching the video feed of this ball being thrown up on the green, <laughs> watching it roll what not just off, but way off right yes. into one of the – because another thing about these greens, no fringe, because that is one of the other defenses of this course, Kelly. So, yes, only one water feature. Like, we're, it's one of those things where it's not one of these dramatic courses we're going to go in and say, like, oh, my gosh, this is so crazy. Like, look at all this. No, it's just the way that they built it. They wanted to go in and they wanted to say, hey, you're going to have to stick these greens. And guess what? You're not going to stick all of them. And if you can't do it, you are going to have to be very good with your short game. You're going to have to have figure out what you want to do. Because the other thing it brings into play, depending on where you are, you could put it. You yep. could chip it. You might use a wood to go up there. Like, we're going to see all kinds of craziness. Bump happen. and runs, yeah. Texas wedges, all mm. kind of things. Yeah, we saw Colin Morikawa earlier this week uh, you, uh, using, I think it was a seven wood to practice. Mm. So I, it, it does. I, I love these kind of U.S. Opens where you do get to see, look, it's around the green play is going to be important this week. Scrambling is going to be important. But as you just said, Matt, there's a lot of different ways you can get that done. Interesting when it brings in creativity like that to the U.S. Open because we know there are some guys that are a little bit more special in that area than others, and some guys that like just to be very straightforward with their game. So I think it's going to be a major factor with who ends up winning this thing. Absolutely. 16 amateurs in the field as well this week, a bunch of qualifiers. And some of those qualifiers you will know because they are actual tour players that qualified right. to like had like to get into this. Yeah, there are only 80, <laughs> uh, 80 plus uh, automatic qualifiers for all of this. But when we come back, we're going to get really into this odds board, see what we think about the guys at the top as we move into the middle. Where did we kind of start to build our betting cards this week? Because again, when you have Scotty Scheffler, maybe it's just a placement market world we're living in. This is Long Shots, VEASAN's premier golf betting podcast. Here's Matt Brown, Wes Reynolds, and Kelly Bidlin. It is Long Shots here on VEASAN, the VEASAN Podcast Network, as well if you're catching us in podcast form. And if you sat on your hands and didn't take advantage of the special that we had going last month, one, what were you doing? But two, we're going we're gonna to let you continue to get something for free, just not as much for free. We gave you 14 mm -hmm. months. We're going to give you 13 months this time to say, hey, don't mess around because the way this is going, Kelly, if you trend this, it's 14 and it's 30. I'm, I'm guessing next month's going to be back to 12. I'm, I, I, yeah. I don't know for sure. I'm not in on these conversations, but I'm just going to assume 14, 13, probably back to 12. Next month, you might be able to get 12 months for 12 months. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So go in, use the promo code GOLF, G O L F, $199, going to get you 13 months. So one month absolutely free. And trust me, you don't want to wait around and be the person that missed out on the free month. So take advantage of that. Promo code GOLF, G O L F. F. I thought you were going to stop trying to spell that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> it's what I said. Listen, I want to make sure that people know exactly what to type in over there. I don't want them to get a virus on their computer whenever they type in something wrong. I'm worried about you spelling golf wrong you know? <laughs> Matt Brown, Wes Reynolds, Kelly Bidlin. We are breaking down the U.S. Open over at Pinehurst, number two. Looking at this odds board, we talked a little bit about Scotty Scheffler sitting at plus 280, but let's get into some of these other guys and how we at how we attack the top of the board. 10 to 1 on Xander Shoffley, 11 to 1 on Roy McIlroy, 14 to 1 Colin Morikawa, Victor Hovland, 18 to 1. Three good rounds for Victor Hovland this past week and one terrible round, and that yeah. one terrible round was enough to kind of push him way down that leaderboard, all the way down to T8, I believe it was, final, finally finishing for him. 20 to 1 on Bryson and Brooks Kepka. Ludwig Ogberg sitting there at 22, Rom at 25, Fleetwood 35, and everyone else 40 or longer. We sit here coming into this news that John Rom pulls out of the live event, some sort of toe thing and toe west of fungus or toe. He was, he was wearing one. He was wearing one shoe today at the uh, media yes. availability, yeah. so he yes. is on the grounds. By the way, he wasn't there yeah. on Monday. Foot foot problems. Yeah, what yes. wasn't there? Yeah, just to, to get everybody up to speed on the situation, we are, you know, recording uh, recording this uh, on Tuesday, so we'll see how things yeah. move along, but uh, he, uh, at, Wes, as I said, well, it didn't show up till his media um, availability today. Showed up wearing one sandal on that toe. Yes. A lot of you probably saw the video of him in clear pain off the tee box last week when he withdrew from the live event. Um, it is a lesion in between his toes that is infected. Um, and he said today it is something he is, you know, concerned about heading into the U.S. Mm -hmm. Open. So, 
Yeah. Maybe I targeted him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I kind of, I think I, I, yeah. I, I did as well. Yeah, I, I helped you, you yeah, yeah. along there with all that. Look, Xander, if, if, if there wasn't a guy named Scotty Scheffler, maybe Xander has a couple more wins this season so as we'd well. Be talking the, guy is, the guy has played so incredibly well. We find him as second on the odds board here, right, rightfully so. I think he is, should be ahead of Rory McIlroy, maybe even, maybe even bigger than he is, sitting at 10 to 1. Guys, I was trying to figure out ways to get access to, to Xander Schauffele. I ended up getting just kind of pairing him up in an exacta with Scotty Scheffler is how I tried to do it. But I think another guy that I think if you're if you're kind of trying to just make money, here, it's, this isn't a cash a lottery ticket type situation, but if you are trying to make money, Xander Schauffele has been incredibly consistent all year long, and it would be hard for me to believe that he goes and lays an egg here in this tournament. I mean, you're still getting plus money even at a top 10 yeah, on I, Xander. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, anybody who listens to this pod, you know at this point this is just an auto bet for me. It's about one of the few things that's been working actually well mm-hmm. in my golf betting this year. He's teed it up 13 times on tour this season. He's finished inside the top 10, or you would have you know, won on a T9 mm-hmm. uh, or whatever. Maybe you'd still would have been if you bet him with uh, uh, ties paying full. Um, 13 times he t- he's teed it up. He's finished inside the top 10 t- in 10 of those times i've bet it eight times cashed on six of them so i'm going to keep going right back to the well it's not and it's not just that right it's not just the trend it's everything when we talk about this course this course still should be a good fit for him everything he's doing well he's accurate off the tee we know he's a great approach approach game player and around the greens he's still got a he's got a very solid game and the putting get, keeps getting a little bit better a little bit better as we go so xander a guy i'm very confident in this week west xander a guy that that actually rated out very well for me in the models i mean it was basically him and scotty in the vast majority kind of the one two spots yeah. and a lot of them sure he, you know there might be a couple of versions where he was three or four but never outside of the top five and if you look at consistency on tour this year xander's name is is literally right there with scotty it just doesn't he just doesn't have all of the wins to show for it though he did get one yeah look uh, xander had a couple times where, where he had to fail this year mm-hmm. before he succeeded uh of course uh, at the players championship 54 hole leader uh didn't get it done scotty scheffler gets the win and then was second at the wells fargo the week before the pga rory kind of pasted him on the back mm-hmm. nine, really ran away from him, and then Xander followed it up. So, you know, that old, oh, man, there's going to be a hangover from, you know, finishing runner-up hadn't happened, you know, and maybe maybe Colin Morikawa finds himself in that situation this week, too, because, uh, I hope you know, not. he was in the final group. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, <laughs> but he was in the uh, final group at the PGA, didn't really do anything mm-hmm. on Sunday, ended up finishing fourth, and then... You know, runner-up last week at the Memorial, had a chance, didn't get there. So maybe that follows up this week. But, you know, we've seen little glimpses out of these guys. You, you mentioned, Kelly, also the injury to Rom. Ludwig Obert, it mm. seems like he's recovered, but he had a partially yeah. torn meniscus in his knee, uh, which forced him to drop out of the mm. Wells Fargo. And then, of course, he played the PGA. So finished top five last week at the Memorial. So maybe he is over that. But... Looking at how the market market gives him a ton of respect. Yeah, it's it, it's it, a difference I think between Scotty and, and Ludwig for for me, Kelly, and I think this is something where I've come around on is if I miss out on Ludwig, it would I'd be okay with that because it's like he still hasn't been able to get there over and over again like Scotty is. The reason I don't want to be to 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 not be exposed to Scotty in some way, shape, or form is I do feel I would feel stupid then whenever he goes out and just wins again, which it looks like again I, I, all my models say he should everything that everything that about this course screams Scotty Scheffler and what he does well. So I'm okay missing out on Ludwig. This is me basically saying I don't have a bet on him yeah. this week, and I think the talent is there. I think he's going to win a ton of tournaments, but I'm. If I miss out at twenty two to one, it's not gonna break my heart. I also think the big difference, you know, big difference between what we're hearing injury wise, Ludwig and Rom, right? I mean Rom I didn't get to watch it today, but I mean, Ron went up there media availability and basically told everybody what's exactly what's wrong with him. Ludwig's been a little bit more cagey about that, right, Wes? I mean, we did yeah. finally get information, but for a while it was he was a little combative with people of, no, I'm fine, it's not bothering me, yada, yada, yada. When we kind of know there is something there, um, and, and you know, I do think I misspoke earlier, Wes. I think we're on the same side with Morikawa, but um, you know, another guy worth bringing up that I think you are you and I are matching on as well. I mean, Hideki. Hideki is ba- battling through. Uh, you know, he has a back injury. He's always injured. But he, no. he is always injured. Worth, yeah, that is worth bringing up as well. He is always injured. Um, I don't know. Any, I don't think there's anybody else of note to bring up injury wise. But those no. would those would be the three I would definitely want to uh, throw out there. Yeah, I, guys. Roy McIlroy, eleven to one. Like I said, I, I I think there should be a bigger gap between him and Xander. Me too. I, I'm. You know, the talent's there, and and Wes, we're not going to argue that Roy's 
whether he's one of the best players in the world or not, of course we know he's one of the best players in the world, but we're, we bring up win equity a lot on this on this show. And yeah, Scotty steals a lot of that from everyone because he just keeps going out and winning. But whenever I look at not only this course fit and what you really need to do well and all of that and kind of where Rory's game is, I'm I'm not comfortable at 11 to 1. And I don't know yeah. what the number would need to be for me to feel comfortable, but I'm, I'm not there with him. No, I, and I'm not either. Yeah. And I'm usually somebody that, you know, can get mm. there off at times with Rory, yeah. but he could win here, but. And and he won he's won the U.S. Open before. Now that was yeah. 2011 at Congressional, which was a rain-soaked course where he just absolutely torches those things. Mm. Oh, and you've seen that many times over the years. But this week, I'm not sure. Now, Rory, I think, is a guy that can be creative around the greens. And I know when we talk about the stats, we're going to hit on that pretty heavily because I think that that's going to matter a lot this week. So you're going to have to play a wide variety of shots, which he has, but. You know, I'm willing. To, I'm willing to let him beat me here this week. Yeah, yeah. It never. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm never the biggest Rory guy here uh, on this show. Uh, I think Wes probably is, and I don't even know that he's the you know the super Rory fan out there. But when I hear Wes is passing on him, I've got absolutely no interest in him. And I, I'm with you, Matt. I, I is this the first tournament we've seen where Xander has been shorter than Rory? I think the recent ones they've been about even, right? And maybe this will change around. Obviously, book to book might be a little bit different, but this is the first one I can recall where we finally do see Xander shorter than him clearly uh over there so rory um interesting case he definitely rates out i mean he still rates out very highly for me but not one not one i was interested yeah. really at all the in next game. guy on the odds board is the guy that we're all interested in colin morikawa yeah. uh actually just flashed to 16 to 1 over at DraftKings as we we're recording this and colin morikawa on all three of our cards this week and a guy that I was out on at the beginning of the season, and I think rightfully so, because what he did well wasn't there. And then he has progressed and gotten better and better and better along the way. And, Wes, now we look at Morikawa, and he's more of that Colin Morikawa that we knew a couple of years ago, right, where he elite with the irons, hitting the fairways, doing all the things that we loved about Colin Morikawa. Heading in, is it enough to pick off Scotty Scheffler at his best? Probably not. But if, like we said, but if we get B plus out of Scotty Scheffler, I do think it is good enough to pick well, off. Well, and look, he's right there. And, yeah. and the fact that, you know, that Masters wasn't a one shot deal, the fact that he's followed it up with really good finishes at the RBC and at uh, Colonial and then also uh, at the uh, PGA. Mm. And then last week at the Memorial. So he's got, I believe, uh, four top four finishes in his, like, his last five events. So he's right there, and he's finally playing the kind of golf that made him a two-time major champion at a very young age. Kelly, I know he's on your card as well. One of the couple of outrights that you have. Yeah, absolutely. I'm right there with you guys on Morikawa. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's finally found the irons after they were a struggle at the beginning of the year. Three straight tournaments where he's gained and gained big on approach, and he's putting well, too. Four, tournament, four out of his last five gaining with the putter. I like his full game right now at this tournament. When we get back, we'll get every single staff that we plugged into the model, what it said, and we'll start letting you know what made our betting cards this week. This is Long Shots, VEASAN's premier golf betting podcast. Here's Matt Brown, Wes Reynolds, and Kelly Bidlin. It is Long Shots here on VEASAN, also the VEASAN Podcast Network. You're catching us over there. And if you haven't done so, if you're watching us on VEASAN, yes, this is a podcast that happens each and every week, not just for the major golf tournaments. Go in, find where you, wherever you get your podcast. Go in, subscribe, rate, review. We do appreciate all of that as well. Matt, Kelly, and Wes. Not going to take uh, too much time here to talk about these, these stats and things because, guys, I think we're probably – mostly aligned with how we went about it. That said, there probably is going to be one difference in all this, which I do want to talk about. But U.S. Open primer up at VEASAN.com, too. Oh. I know mine are included in there. There you go. Ready, so. There you go. Go on over there. That's absolutely free. Absolutely should, free. Yeah, we absolutely free. At VEASAN.com. So we talked about each and every week. Approach is always going to be a stat that we put into the models. Uh, disclaimer, we are we're not programmers. We do not program these models. We're using other people's models. We're putting in the stats we find and then uh, weighting those accordingly to how much we want those to factor into what the algorithm spits out. And so we talk about approach. I think long iron play is going to be something we all looked at this week. And we talked about with the way that these greens are, there's going to be around the green and scrambling stuff that we weighed pretty heavily. But Wes, I, I think they're, the point of differentiation between all of us, or maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know what you guys put in. Might be how much we weigh stuff either off the tee, driving distance, driving accuracy, good drive, whatever whatever factors we decided to put in for stuff when the guys are holding driver in their hand because I think there is differing opinion how 
how people are going to be able to attack this course. Mm. Yeah, and and look, more often than not, when we do this, it's not every single week, but mm. more often than not, approach is probably the heaviest weighted mm. stuff that we have, and it is very rare that I think like around the green and scrambling is so heavily mm. weighted. It's usually kind of maybe in the middle. Yeah. It was at the top for mm. me uh, this week. So uh, in terms of off the tee, I still use some stuff, but it was not one of my top four or five categories next necessarily. I looked at good drives gain. I think you could certainly look at total driving if you mm -hmm. just kind of want like a macro. <laughs> how yeah. is somebody driving the ball? Even though I don't think it's not about distance necessarily, nor it's about accuracy. It's about positioning yeah. and getting yourself the proper angle into these greens. <laughs> like, you know, like uh, I mentioned that Victor Hovland said, uh, rip it, you know, rip it off the tee. And then you got to be really conservative into these greens and, and make sure you put in the right spot. Kelly, I did kind of factor in all aspects of driving, which yeah. I don't really ever do. But I think distance is certainly going to be an advantage. You know, it's always an advantage. I didn't put it in as a sole statistic. I did the whole total driving thing, which combines accuracy and distance. I did put in some good drive stuff. I put in even some distance from the edge of the fairway stuff. I did even some fairways gained more or less to kind of see who has in their bag. What is as what you mentioned, what's going to be necessary? I think to probably fight off double bogeys and things like that, because that's what really what this is going to be about. If you hear what these people are saying, this is likely to be as difficult scoring conditions as we've seen in quite some time over par might win this thing. I mean, when it's all said and done. Yeah. And so I kind of was trying to see who is the most well-rounded with whatever they're going to choose to go, whatever their weapon of choice is. Maybe it's driver, maybe it's three wood. I don't care whatever it is. And so I actually did factor off the tee stuff a little bit more than I thought I was going to. So for those watching at home right now, I think this is a great shot of what mm -hmm. we're dealing with. And I know we talked about this a little bit in the first segment, but it really not anything majorly different from what you see in a U.S. Open course, except for where fairway blends into rough normally. The rough is just yeah. completely gone. You can it see how exist. it pinches in, like on the video, uh, yeah, once you yeah. get past 300 But it, this is just, you're playing out of these chunky waste areas with, uh, what are they calling it, blue wire, gra uh, green blue wire, wire grass. <laughs> whatever it's called. Um, and so pine what, weeds. So what, weeds. Yeah, pine well. weeds. So what's yes. going to happen? Sometimes you're going to hit over there, and you're going to have an okay lie on occasion. Other times, you're going to have an absolutely nightmare yeah. situation. So that's why it's going to be so important, such a premium on accuracy this week for me. I understand, Matt, I did factor in distance. Definitely leaned more to accuracy stats, though. I want to make sure these guys are staying out of that uh, as much as humanly possible. So off the tee, that's really, really where I focused m more. But distance it's a long course mm -hmm. you got to be good I, I feel like i say this often but you got to be you either got to be long off the tee or hitting those long irons you need to be very proficient and, and for me to be considering you. wes i guessed you know and again I, i'm i'm just going by what i'm hearing i we we hear guys talk about courses all the time and they still go out and score well but I, i'm guessing these are going to be incredibly difficult scoring conditions mm -hmm. so I factored, you talk about how much you you factor around the green and scrambling and stuff like that more than normal. This is the highest I think I've ever put in bogey avoidance as well mm, because too. it's kind of like, hey, for a lot of these holes, par is going to be a great score. You know, yeah, like yeah. go out, get your four and move on, you know. And so I actually factored in bogey avoidance, I think, way more than I have in, in years past because if we think that this thing does play to – you know, two under to two over type as a winning score. If that's the case, then I got to have guys that aren't going out there yeah. and putting up, you know, doubles and triples. I did the same thing yeah. too, and then put a little three putt avoidance. Now, keep in mind when I give this number, uh, the three putt rate in 2014 was a little over 5%. Mm. That was on bent grass greens. These, of course, are now Bermuda mm. greens. However, the speed is gonna is gonna be just as I think noticeable mm -hmm. as as we've seen on these videos so far during the program. Yeah. So I felt three putt avoidance because look, you're gonna knock these by, and you're gonna have these seemingly makeable putts where you're from six or seven feet, miss it on maybe the edge of the cup, and it's gonna roll five, six, seven pass, and that's tough. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to save pars at a U.S. Open, and uh, you know, I don't want to go all uh, Johnny Miller, the former longtime uh, color analyst on the U.S. Open, but we talked about open pressure. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, right? And uh, you're going to see that, I think, on the greens this week. So, Kelly, you plugged in the stats, you weighted what you thought was important, and your model put out some numbers. Now, we are not slaves to the models; that we say that all the time. Sometimes the numbers are so there's such a discrepancy that we feel like it's a, it's a must bet. But yeah. I don't think you got really to that point this week. I didn't get to that point. 
point this week. So what ended up making your call? Yeah, I, and I'll start with uh, start with my outrights. I did make these. Uh, the I made these over the past weekend actually mm-hmm. before U.S. Open odds were kind of pulled and then reposted. So the ones I've got pure outrights uh, wise now is Colin Morikawa at twenty one to one and Hideki Matsuyama fifty to one. You could still find uh, Hideki right around that number. The only difference probably is I would if you were looking at both these guys. I'd be betting with the winner without Scheffler market. That's the only difference. So you see the one other guy I added, it was Keegan Bradley in that exact market. Keegan has been great off the tee last week, and if you got to live through the roller coaster of the full Keegan experience last week, I'm going right back at it because I did last week, and I'm I'm going in for more. I'm not missing out on Keegan Bradley winning the U.S. Open. I like his game right now. So that's where I stand kind of with winner bets. Um, And this is more cow we kind of hit on. Uh, Matsuyama is, I mean, he's a wizard around the greens. As long as that back can hold up and he's not spraying it off the tee too much, I really like his game here. Um, So those where I went there. I'm going aiming high end, though, for Matsuyama and Bradley. We know mm-hmm. those guys can blow up and have some issues. So I went outright, uh, outright, you know, or winner without Scheffler with those guys for those reasons. Um, down to the bets I love the most. Scotty Scheffler, top five. Five wins, last eight events. You can't, like, you can't argue what this guy's doing out there. You're cashing this bet fairly often. I don't care that it's a U.S. Open. Minus 137, I'll play that with ties paying full. And if there wasn't for an overzealous policeman, who knows? It might have been. Exactly. It might, the stat might be even better. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And then top, Louisville police. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> top tens. Insane. Right back. This is my, these are my big uh, biggest bets last week. I'm going right back to the well here. Matsi, uh, Morikawa and then Xander Shoffley. Um, talked a lot about Xander and Colin already. Both those guys playing incredibly golf, incredible golf. I feel like Call More Cow is on a heater right now. I don't know about, about you guys, but this is some struggles to start the season with the Irons. Everything is where else is rounded into form. Uh, four top finishes in, five, in the five last events. Wes, I think you mentioned that er, earlier. Uh, round the green games is firing. Even the putting's gotten better from what we've seen in Call More Cow in the past. So really like him this week. Played him outright top 10, top 20. Tommy Fleetwood then in top 20 market. I think the first time you guys, you guys at least, or anybody else who listens to this podcast regularly has seen me burn a lot of money on Tommy Fleetwood mm-hmm. in the past. I don't think I've touched, I don't think I've played him once this year. Top 20 market, I'm going to go with Fleetwood. Yeah, his game has been uh, better recently. A top 10 kind of rated out guy for me this week. Like everything he's bringing to the table, wish he was a little bit longer off the tee, a little bit better with the long irons, but still top uh, T20 Memorial, T21 RBC Canadian, T26 PGA, T13 at Wells Fargo. He's playing some really good golf recently. Um, then top 40 market, Sepp Straka and Aaron Rye. That's where I attacked these two guys. I would say some outliers a little bit for me. I thought popping in the model as, as high as they did. Um, Straka, I love what he's doing uh, with the irons and off the tee right now. A little concerned about the around the green game. Aaron Rye, kind of the old, same old story. Can he putt? Can he play around the green? If he can do that, I think yeah. he has a good week. One Rye, other thing I should mention about Rye is in, in this, Kelly, is it, you know a lot of times we put in stuff that emphasizes accuracy. One of the best accurate drivers there is out there, as high as fifth in one of my models, oh, he I was, should he, say. So he was cracking just, top just, five. Yep. Just, just to say. I don't have him, but I do. I'm, uh, I, but just to point out, like he, well, it's not just you. It was showing up for me as well. Yeah, and then for, so yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he, yeah, he was fourth or fifth in a couple mm-hmm. of mine. So, and then Aaron Wright uh, over Jaeger in uh, tournament matchup. Fleetwood over John Rahm. We hinted at that already. I think that's the best way to attack Rahm this week. Pick a, per, a tournament matchup if you could find one out there. Give him the most amount of days for that toe to start feeling bad, and hopefully he tees off and then withdraws at some point. Point. That's what I'm hoping on. And then Matsuyama, top Japanese player, minus 105. I thought that number was uh, w- w- way too long. I thought he'd be way shorter than that. So I like that as a prop this week. Yeah, it's going to be, like I said, Rai showing up for me as well. I'm going to have some Sepp Straka on my card as well when we come back. Go through mine and Wes's card, top to bottom here. I ended up more bets than I thought. We'll yeah, see if did. they can cash this week. This is Long Shots, VEASAN's premier golf betting podcast. Here's Matt Brown, Wes Reynolds, and Kelly Bidlin. It is Long Shots. We talk golf betting here on this here show. Also a podcast that you can go in, VEASAN Podcast Network. We do appreciate you subscribe, rating, and reviewing this here podcast. We just went through Kelly's Plays, which you can find over at VEASAN.com slash picks if you are a VEASAN Pro subscriber. If you're not already, use promo code GOLF. Wes, you can also find your picks, your write-ups, your uh, everything that you do each and every week for us over there. But let's go ahead and get 
to the goods here. What made your betting card this week? Yeah, Morikawa, as we mm. mentioned earlier. Uh, we all uh, love him. Yeah, we, yes. we do. And, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, 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 boy, hopefully that works out, at, mm. least, at least this time. Uh, uh, Morikawa, look, I mentioned top four or top four and four of his last five, top ten in his five of his last six. Uh, you know, also has had some decent success in the past on mm. Donald Ross designs. Some of the Donald Ross designs you'll see on the tour East Lake. By the way, at Atlanta, not that that's a direct corollary, because there's a lot of different ways you can go, of course, corollaries or correlations, I should say, this week. Uh, uh, Victor Hovland uh, at uh, about plus 2250s in the 20 range, pretty much across the board. Uh, Vic, bad weekend last week mm-hmm. in the Memorial, was right in there and then shot eight over over the last two rounds mm-hmm. to slip to T15. And yet he was fourth in the field in ball striking behind the top three finishers, Scheffler, Morikawa, and Hadwin. He's actually had some success success on Donald Ross designs. Remember, he won the FedEx Cup last year down in Atlanta at mm-hmm. East Lake, and also was T2 in the PGA Championship, which was won by Brooks Kepka at Oak Hill. So, you know, I thought that was an interesting correlation this week. So I think Victor Hovland, look, I know the short game's always a concern, yeah. but where you have to be creative, where you don't have to play it one way necessarily. Right. I think that that opens it up and that levels the playing field maybe at least a little bit. Uh, Speaking of really good. Real quick, Wes. Matt, he's a guy you and I have bet a ton in the past. I battled whether to add add him or not. Ended up passing. I I, I think I'm okay with that. But how did you feel about Vic this week? What Wes said at the very end, it was just the short game stuff that that it was a big problem for him last year. has kind of popped back up again. That's what kept me off of. I love every other part of his game. It seems like he's a little bit more confident as well than he was uh, a little bit ago but uh, I don't I don't I don't mind it at all. I just couldn't quite get there. I do agree, though, Wes. Yeah. I think with the different options he could have around mm-hmm. the green, I, he might end up yeah. surprising Because he kind of sure. did that thing at St. Andrews where he, like, putted everything. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. he, won't, he, great. he won't have to chip off tight lines, which right. is what yeah. he means. Like, he, yeah. he, he cannot chip off tight lines. He, he can just putt it. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to putt, mm-hmm. I, I think, like everything right around that green. Uh, another guy really good around the green, uh, Tommy Fleetwood. Uh Around uh, mid 40 ish to one T3 in the Masters earlier this year, three time top five finisher at the U.S. Open. I don't think Fleetwood is ever a guy that's going to win a U.S. Open on like a big bomb and gouge mm-hmm. type of course. Yeah. So he's not going to win at a wing foot. He's not going to win at a Beth Page Black, despite the fact he did finish runner up at Shinnecock uh, to Brooks Kepka years ago. But he's an accurate driver, really good around the greens. I think that this is kind of the really good setup for Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, and I also agree with Kelly on Hideki Matsuyama. 45 to 1. Gained in all the strokes gain categories last week at the Memorial was second in scrambling. Uh, first for strokes gained around the green when you look at the season uh, mm-hmm. instead of maybe just going 24 rounds or 36 rounds. So Matsuyama, look, I, I think that this is the type of thing where, where he will flourish and he will be able to gain strokes around the green as well kind of the uh, Jedi master of gaining strokes around the green. And this is not a guy bad and he has not had a great year, even though he did make a playoff on the lift tour. I think Cameron Smith kind of pops this Ooh. week a, a little bit. If I he know, wins for you, I can tell you it's going to be a bad week for me. I, 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 <laughs> and I, know, I, know, I, know, I know it's controversial, <laughs> but he's been out of sight, out of mind, uh, sprays it off the tee. But I think that this is a setup where he can maybe get a little bit away, away with that, mm-hmm. considering the width of the fairways and the fact that, you know, he's played out of bunkers his whole life. You know, you'll have some of these sandy waste areas on those Australian courses. Number one in scrambling in live. Recent form obviously doesn't jump off the page, but this is a better fit for him because he's not a bomb and gouge guy really necessarily either. And uh, we've seen his wizardry around the greens. We still see it, even though he has not really played all that well this year. And then uh, uh, finally, uh, Tony Finau, 75 to 1. Fifth on approach this season, ninth tee to green. T8 at the Memorial, gaining all the strokes gain. But the reason why, and, and look, it's been his putter that's been struggling, even though he's okay last week yeah. at, at uh, Muirfield Village. Only hit 50% of his greens and 51% of his fairways. But the ball striking has been outstanding. So I think with the putter, it's a very similar principle this week as a lot of these guys are going to have to putt defensively anyway. You're not going to be super aggressive mm. with your putts necessarily. And I think the fast greens could be a great equalizer because of that defensive putting that you have to have. A uh, couple props I played. And look, I'm going to add some placement mm-hmm. markets and some matchups over the next day or so up at visa.com slash picks. Uh, Brian Harmon, uh, plus 230, 23 to 10 fractionally as top lefty. Robert McIntyre, obviously the favorite in this market mm-hmm. who just won the RBC 
Harmon's had the more consistent season, runner up to Scotty at the players. Akshay Batia has kind of been struggling with the putter lately. Phil Mickelson, obviously, also in this market, but unless a U.S. Open is going to be held at Augusta, I'm not giving him much of a mm-hmm. shot at 54 years old. And then Sam Berstow, the rookie from England, playing for the first time uh, as a professional in the United States. And then Christian Bezadenhout, 9 to 5, low South African. I basically take him over Dean Burmester. Mm-hmm. Burmester is a real bomb and gouger, real bomber off the tee, played very well at the PGA. So that was a, a good one for me there. But Bez, more of the putter and scrambler here. And I think that that's going to matter more. And he's one of the best on the tour at doing both. Yeah, I um like we can go ahead and skip straight to kind of where I said if uh, if if Cam Smith has a good <laughs> yeah. has a good day, it's gonna be bad for me. I actually fading him uh, all over the place. So I have over thirty three and a half on Cam Smith placement. I have Matsuyama over Cam Smith. I have Max Homa over Cam Smith. I also have Matt Fitzpatrick over Cam Smith. It's a full on fade for me. My model hated Cam Smith this week and I went in and dug in and he's just been playing like garbage uh, over on on live a horrible performance this past week as well I'm I he is a wizard around the greens but I think like you got to be up there in order for that to matter and so I just don't know if that's going to happen for him this week so big fade for me of Cam Smith this week so one of me and Wes is going to be happy that's uh that's for sure heading back we talked about Colin Markala uh, I'm on Markala everyone's on Markala we don't need to go into that anymore only two other outrights for me. One, Justin Thomas. I have him outright. If you kind of look at his recent form, guys, he's coming around, right? The only problem is, is he can't putt at all. Yeah, I wonder if he should try to putt left-handed. I don't know like, what, what's happening with him. He's lost at least 2.4 strokes putting in six of his last nine tournaments. That being said, he's gained on approach in seven of the last eight. That's what we love about him. If you look at last month's PGA at Valhalla, he gained a ridiculous 13 strokes tee to green, but lost over three putting. It's just always when he gets on the green, the flat stick. Maybe he can run hot and, and pay off what he's been doing with all the other aspects of his game. So I do have uh, outright on Justin Thomas. The other outright is Scotty Scheffler, but not the outright that you're thinking of. I have Scotty Scheffler go wire to wire at 20 to 1. Um, so that's the way that I'm going to get exposure to Scotty Scheffler. I think it's very likely if he comes out hot that he could just run away with this thing, considering that we think this is going to be difficult scoring conditions. If Scotty goes two or three under on day one, it could be game over for, yeah. for this field. And so I, I, like took, I took Scotty wire to wire uh, 20 to 1 on that. So only three outrights that I have in this one. Bunch of player, bu- bunch of, of, of position market stuff for me this week in head to heads because I just don't want to get in the way of a truck, right? I want to get in the way of Scheffler this week. And so Sepp Straka, you mentioned Kelly, you like some Sepp Straka. I have top 10, top 20, and top 30 on him, kind of a ladder effect for, for him, trying to get some of what I think might could be the ceiling and then also just get what I think has been really consistent play for him. T16 at the, at the Players, T16 at the Masters, T5 at the RBC, T8 at Wells Fargo, back-to-back T5s the last two weeks at Schwab in the Memorial. Guy's been playing very, very well. Yeah, there's a couple of missed cuts in there, but I mean, listen, unless you're, unless you're one of these super elite players, you're going to miss cuts every now and then. So I do have him in there with that. Alex Noren, another guy that was really, really high up in all the models for me. Inside the top 22 in every single version of the models that I ran, as high as number five in my 36-round model. Great on approach, great scrambling, great at bogey avoidance. Going back to early May, he's, he's missed one cut. Yeah. And outside of that, he's no finish no finish lower than T23. Yeah, came back and hit a top 20 after missing the cut. He's yeah. been one of the kings of consistency. Yeah, T23 at the Open last year, T12 at the PGA, so he can get it done in big tournaments as well. So really do like him there. A bunch of head-to-heads, right? So Max Homa over Patrick Cantlay. Patrick Cantlay, I don't know what's going on with him, but if you look at his stat profile, guys, it is, it's unbelievable that he's even the same golfer that he was a year and a half ago. I have Xander over Rory. I have, I mentioned all the ones about, uh, all the ones over Cam Smith that I have, some other placement market stuff. I have Matt Fitzpatrick under 35 and a half. If you look at the short-term models, they're going to like him. If you look at long-term models, you're not going to like Matt Fitzpatrick. But you hear that weird stuff about him playing with a weight in his driver that he didn't know and all these different things that were going on. But if you look at short-term stuff, models really liked him a ton. And I took over 45 Whoa. and a half on, on Wyndham Clark. Matt um, Brown feeding Wyndham Clark. Whoa. Guys, guys he's been, he's yeah, been, he's been, he's been so <laughs> inconsistent. <laughs> he's been horrible. I mean, he's been so, so, so bad. And the fact that, you know, you're able to get this 45 and a half or even if he still like creeps into the cut, 
you're still able to cash this ticket as opposed to just taking him and miss the cut. I did like that one as well. All of my plays will be up over a couple more that we didn't get to here on the show will be up over at vsan.com slash picks. And of course, long shots available wherever you get your podcasts.